The Jason Foundation is dedicated to the awareness and prevention of the silent epidemic of youth suicide. This is accomplished through a series of educational and awareness programs that help equip parents, youth, educators, and other community members with the tools and resources to identify at-risk youth and know where to go to get them help. So how prevalent is youth suicide within our country? Well, since 2007, youth suicide rates have increased 55%. Suicide is currently the second leading cause of death for 10 to 24 year olds in our country. Within that age group, we lose approximately 130 lives each week. Our younger population should be recognized as a high-risk population as well. In 10 to 14-year-olds, the number of suicides have doubled within the last decade. So now, let's take a look at risky behaviors within our youth. The CDC conducts the Youth Risk Behavioral Survey. The purpose of this survey is to monitor risky behaviors within high school youth that contribute to the leading causes of death. There are certain questions within the YRBS that specifically deal with mental illness. The first one that we look at is, have you experienced thoughts of hopelessness or sadness for a period of two weeks or greater so that it affected your usual activities. 36.7% of high school youth answered yes to this question, or over one out of every three young people across our nation. And what is this a question about? Many people will say depression. Now, when we do take a look at this a little further, this could possibly be the start of clinical depression. And what's the difference? Clinical depression is not something that you can just bring yourself out of. You can't lift yourself up, dust yourself off, and, and move through it. Sometimes this requires professional help in the form of counseling or therapy or possibly even the use of medication. 36.7% of the United States high school youth said yes to this question. It's quite alarming. The second question in the Youth Risk Behavioral Survey that we look at is, have you seriously considered suicide in the past 12 months? 18.8% .8 of youth said yes, or almost one out of every five. When we like to take a look at this number, I often compare it to high school class size. Here in Tennessee, that's about 26, and the national average is right about the same. So, that means three young people in every single classroom said yes, they have seriously considered suicide in the past 12 months. The next question, have you made a plan to attempt suicide in the last 12 months? I know where the gun is. I know where the ammunition is kept. I know where the drugs are. I know when my parents aren't going to be home, and I know where I'm going to do it. We go from a time of concern when someone is seriously considering suicide to a time of crisis when they have a plan in place. If there is no intervening factor at this point, an attempt is almost imminent. 15.7% of our high school youth said yes to this question, or almost one out of every six. So again, we're looking at three or four young people in every single classroom across our country who said yes to this. Finally, the last question that we look at here at the Jason Foundation is, have you attempted suicide one or more times in the past 12 months? 8.9% of our high school youth said yes to this. That's almost one out of every 11. Again, two students every single classroom said they've attempted suicide one or more times in the past 12 months.
So, what are some of the warning signs that we should be looking out for in youth that may be struggling with thoughts of suicide? Depression is one of the leading causes of suicide attempts across all ages. And oftentimes, depression is exhibited in out-of-character behavior. So, what we need to look at is this young person that you know all of a sudden starts exhibiting characteristics that are foreign to them, as you know. Whether that be abrupt changes in attendance, deteriorating academic performance from an honor roll student, maybe sudden changes in appearance, or changed relationships with classmates. Sometimes, this out-of-character behavior is exhibited through increased irritability or aggressiveness. Sometimes, it is shown through a despairing attitude, a lack of interest in things that they may have otherwise been interested in. Whether that is the high school football captain deciding not to play anymore, someone on the dance team refusing to join in after being a part of the team all of their scholastic career. Maybe that is a young person who's been in a band for several years now and then all of a sudden has decided to quit. Another sign to be on the lookout for is suicidal threats. Sometimes these might be vague or veiled, such as, you would be better off if I were not around, or I won't be here much longer to bother you. Other times, they're as straightforward as, I am going to kill myself. As parents or educators, we should also be on the lookout for a preoccupation with death or suicide. Sometimes, this is found in writings, whether it be essays for school, poems about deaths. It can also be exhibited in artwork, drawings depicting death, or projects that focus around loss. We need to also be mindful of social media posts and what young people are sharing with their peers. Previous suicide attempts are also an indicator of a future suicide attempt. Research has shown that boys with a previous suicide attempt have a 30-fold increase in likelihood of a suicide attempt compared to boys who have not attempted suicide in the past. Girls who have attempted suicide are at a threefold risk of attempting again. Final arrangements. Once the decision is final, sometimes a young person will put in place the final arrangements that they would like to have at their death or funeral. Whether they start giving away favorite or prized possessions, putting their affairs in order, saying goodbye to loved ones, or even sharing funeral plans with friends. For some, these warning signs can be seen as typical adolescent behavior, even some adolescent angst, if you will. We need to be concerned when multiple of these warning signs are present at the same time for an extended period of time, usually two weeks or greater. So, what should we do if we suspect that a young person is contemplating suicide? We need to be prepared to ask the tough questions. Just knowing that a young person is struggling with suicide, we need to have a plan in place on how we will approach the subject, how we will bring it up in conversation. So you need to be prepared in the question you're going to ask. Are you thinking about hurting yourself? Are you thinking about suicide? Having this plan in place allows us to revert back to something solid, something concrete that we know we want to ask a young person. Hopefully then we won't be surprised by the situation, but prepared to start that conversation. You need to listen without judging and show you care. You should always stay with that young person or ensure that they are in a safe and secure place before you leave them. Whenever in doubt, get professional help immediately. If you believe that a young person is in immediate danger, call 911 
or visit your closest emergency room. There are other resources available as well. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline will connect you with the closest 24-7 crisis line where you can speak to trained counselors. The phone number is 1-800-273-8255. You can also reach the crisis text line by texting Jason to 741-741. Again, I would like to thank you for your interest in youth and young adult suicide prevention. Here at the Jason Foundation, we know that it's going to take all of us to fight back this terrible, silent epidemic. We have many programs and resources aimed at different parts of the community. So if you are looking for seminars, awareness initiatives, or trainings, please visit us at www. Dot jasonfoundation.com All of our programs and resources are available at no cost. Thank you for your time, and if there's ever anything that we can do for you, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you.